From the invention of drawbridges in ancient Egypt to rotating rooms in Sharifiha House, kinetic design has integrated itself into a crucial part of architectural development. Yet, how did we get from this to this? To understand the concept of kinetic architecture, let's take a deeper look at the origins. Kinetic derives from the Greek word kinetikos, which means relating to muscular motion, while the architectural definition is the concept of allowing parts of a structure to move without reducing the structural integrity. So in other words, it's architecture in the form of a moving body. One of the earliest forms of kinetic architecture is the Bedouin tent used in ancient Africa, which is a cooling tensile structure that is adaptable to the desert climate, along with the drawbridge, a defense mechanism developed in Egypt and later came to common usage in the 15th century. However, the concept of kinetic architecture only began to be acknowledged by architects in the early 20th century, with examples being Yakov Chernikov's drawings in architectural fantasies, and Thomas Gaynor's unbuilt concept of the rotary building in 1908. Yet these publishings were still purely theoretical. A project that was actually built was the Villa Girasole by Navy engineer Angelo Invernizzi. Built in 1935, it's a rotating house that follows the sun's movement to maximize heat and light on the interior. Girasole which translates to sunflower in Italian, sits on a 44 meter diameter circular base and is an extraordinary work of architecture that is built during the ages of functionalist and futurist architecture. It's just like Dorothy's house in The Wizard of Oz, but slightly less chaotic. Later in the 20th century, architects began to shift their focus on kinetic architecture. Theories such as Buckminster Fuller's experimentations with tensegrity models Diona Friedman's Mobile Architecture Manifesto and Spatial City Planning, Cedric Price's Fun Palace, and Peter Cook's Plugin City were being published. Yet the concept of kinetic architecture was first introduced in 1970 by William Zuck, who published the book Kinetic Architecture. This further attracted interest in the kinetic concept as computer science and building technologies started developing. Now, let's dive into some examples from the 21st century. Institute du Arab Monde. Wrapped by 240 photosensitive apertures that open and close automatically to let light in through Islamic patterns called Mashrabiya motifs, the kinetic facade reduces the amount of heat and glare into the innovative institute. Brisbane Airport Parking Garage. With a facade that includes 250,000 aluminum panels, the kinetic facade moves with the wind to imitate a vertical body of calm waves, while the interior of the building gets an innovative pattern of sunlight. Bund Finance Center As the wireless building offers a veil-like moving curtain that is made of 675 magnesium alloy components called tassels, each component travels individually and overlaps to provide visual effects and levels of opacity that reveal a balcony. Other examples include Sherifiha House, which includes residential volumes that rotate to turn into terraces in the summer and close back in the winter. Milwaukee Art Museum, with its movable sun shield made up of 72 steel fins that fold and unfold according to the time of the day, and Al Bahar Tower, with a facade that follows the sun's movement to lead the star-shaped fiberglass panels to open and close, protecting occupants from heat and solar glare. Okay, that was a lot. But it just goes to show how much we've progressed since the advancement of kinetic design. Thanks a lot, Egyptians, I guess? There are so many more examples that showcase the never-ending possibilities of kinetic architecture. But in the end, kinetic design has affected buildings and parameters such as time, weather, energy, and human needs that are not static but rather dynamic. And as a result, kinetic design allows buildings to develop as complex systems that respond to their special needs. Thank you so much for watching, and before we end, I want to spotlight Pacademy, an online architectural educational platform that spreads the idea of using parametric design, computational tools, and artificial intelligence in architecture. You can register and join the live workshops, or watch the previous studio workshop recordings. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notifications to keep up with the new episodes. See you at the next episode!